Uh, so my name is Haley Jepson. I am a PhD grad student at Iowa State University. I'm working under the guidance of Heike Hoffman. Um, today I'm going to talk about um, a project that I worked on with her uh, over the summer. Uh, it was a R package called GG Mosaic, and it implements um, mosaic plots into the ggplot2 framework. Uh, so first, I um, just wanted to make a note that visualizing multi-dimensional data can be cumbersome. Um, in addition, the graphical methods for categorical data are not uh, well de developed in comparison with what is available for numeric variables. Uh, it's because there's a subtle complexity that arises from the hierarchical structure of the counts and proportions, and that is important for understanding the multivariate discrete distributions. In fact, there are three types of distributions, uh, the joint or the marginal or the conditional, that we may be interested in examining, and each supports different kinds of questions about our data. Uh, so I wanted to introduce mosaic plots as one possibility of visualizing multidimensional data as a powerful and easy option. So as a um, motivating example, uh, this was recently published in the New York Times. Um, so there's a stacked bar chart and a mosaic plot. Uh, the data came from North Carolina, which releases detailed individual level uh, information on each voter in the state. And the upshot combined the poll data, or their poll data, with the North Carolina data, and then estimated uh, how every voter in the state of North Carolina is likely to vote. Uh, in addition, they estimated how likely they are going to vote. And I felt that this was a good example of how, with a mosaic plot, uh, you can present two categorical counts simultaneously, and it provides the audience with a clearer view of the underlying data. For example, from the stacked bar chart, we can immediately see that Clinton had a significant lead among early voters, uh, but maybe what was more relevant is not just how Clinton led among el er, um, early voters, but what proportion of the North Carolina voters had already voted. So the mosaic plot provides a better representation of the voters by having the height of the bends be proportional to the number of voters in that likelihood ca category. So the remainder of this talk will focus on mosaic plots as an option uh, for data exploration, analysis, and communication. So a brief introduction to mosaic plots. Uh, for those who are not familiar, and since they are often left out of uh, visualization methods, so mosaic plots are designed to create visualizations of categorical data. The key idea of mosaic plots is that we can map the proportions to the areas of a graphic. Uh, mosaic plots are a disjoint partitioning of a rectangular area. So they are a type of parts to whole uh, plot, similar to a uh, pie chart. But within a mosaic plot, each rectangular subarea expands horizontally or vertically according to its weight relative to its siblings. So it's constructed by dividing a square into smaller squares recursively uh, into horizontal and vertical directions in turn. And because the plots are constructed hierarchically, the ordering of the variables is very important. So here's a quick example of how a mosaic plot is constructed. Uh, so we begin with all diamonds in a one by one square. Uh, then we can look at the distribution of diamonds according to the cut. So in the second plot, the widths of the bends represent the proportion of the diamonds that are, are in that category of cut. And then within each cut category, we can look at the distribution of clarity. So our final product gives us an idea of the frequency with which each cut um, occurs within each clarity 
um, and we get a joint distribution idea. Um, so while mosaic plots have been implemented in a variety of packages, the uh, ordinary gram of graphics does not support mosaic plots. Uh, but with version 2.0 of ggplot2, uh, it was introduced a way for other R packages to implement custom geoms. So with the R package ggmosaic, uh, a custom ggplot2 geom designed for mosaic plots is implemented. And ggmosaic was created primarily using ggproto and the product plots package, uh, which was uh, written some time ago by Hadley and Heike. They referred to their framework product plots, uh, alluding to the computation of area as a product of height and width, and to the statistical concept of generating a joint distribution from the product of the conditional and marginal distributions. So ggmosaic uh, began as a geom extension of the rect geom and used the data handling provided in the product plots package, which um, takes the aesthetics that are called in ggmosaic, uh, converts it to the formula that the product plots package requires, and calculates the x min, x max, y min, and y max for the rect uh, geom to plot. Uh, so there are some limitations to ggmosaic. Um, as far as we could tell, there was not a geom that was capable of handling a variable number of variables. Uh, so our current solution is that we will read in the variables um, x1 and x2 as x equals the product of x1 and x2. So the product function creates a data frame that combines all of the variables listed then allows it uh, to pass the check aesthetics. Uh, then once we've entered the stat mosaic, it splits the variables back apart for the calculations. Um, so the way in which um, the GG mosaic um, works is you can set the aesthetics uh, weight, x, fill, and uh, cons, so cons is the variables that you'd like to condition on. And then uh, from these aesthetics, it sets up the formula where uh, weight is equal to the fill um, plus your x variables, uh, or given any of these conditions. So as a side note, when we look at a stacked bar chart, um, what our formula would be is the y variable conditioned on the x variable. Uh, but why would we even be interested in mosaic plots? Okay. Got clicker happy, there we go. Um, for a plot to be effective, we need to be able to interpret the values, compare them, and to see the relationships among them with ease, clarity, and accuracy. So beginning with Cleveland, a substantial amount of prior research has investigated how visual variables such as position, length, area, shape, and color impact the effectiveness of data visualizations. And where mosaic plots really excel is depicting part to whole uh, relationships. So they work by combining these simple low dimensional graphical primitives in order to display complex high dimensional data. Uh, additionally, from a whole data set, there tend to be many dimensions across which to split the data into parts. And mosaic plots um, provide one option of doing so. And while the visual comparisons within mosaic plots, which are area to area, um, are not as robust as those within bar charts, where we're comparing length along a common baseline. Um, mosaic plots are, can still be useful in situations where, um, say, space is limited or uh, potentially as a starting view of multidimensional part to whole data sets. Uh, so, this example, we can see how a mosaic plot is composed of the product of the marginal distribution of, in this case, it was a STEM major category, and the distribution of sex conditioned 
on major category. So the result is that each one of the disjoint segments in the rightmost mosaic plot has an area proportional uh, to the corresponding joint probability. Uh, and additionally, in the mosaic plot, uh, the marginals can still be quickly estimated by looking at a single row or color. Uh, in contrast, these same data uh, would require 10 bar charts on a bar chart, and one would need to locate and mentally stack the bars uh, to make the same comparisons. So if the goal is to gain insight faster, uh, with all the information displayed in one plot, mosaic plots can uh, provide a good starting point. So having uh, mosaic plots as a geom provides uh, easy customization, uh, faceting. Uh, it's much easier to use than a lot of the other impl implementations of mosaic plots, and it's extremely versatile. So the GG Mosaic package is not limited to mosaic plots. Uh, rather, it is capable of producing a wide variety of plots, including bar charts, stacked bar charts, spine plots, uh, mosaic plots, and double-decker plots. And having a geom designed for mosaic plots, oh, I forgot about this slide. So here's an example of how faceting can be used uh, now that uh, mosaic plots are a geom. So here we're looking at the distribution of uh, happiness according to uh, marital status, and we've conditioned on gender. So having a geom designed for mosaic plots uh, does more than allow us to use the ggplot2 customization options. It allows us to go even, even further. It allows uh, for a ggplotly hook. So as a disclaimer, this information came from uh, Carson Siebert, uh, the maintainer and lead developer of the Plotly's R package. So although uh, ggplotly function translates, uh, most of the geoms bundled with the ggplot2 package, it has no way of knowing the rendering rules for custom geoms. Uh, but the Plotly package does, however, contain the infrastructure to provide translations of custom geoms to Plotly. And in ggplot2, uh, many geoms are special cases of other geoms. Uh, for example, geom line is equivalent to geom path once the data has been sorted uh, by the x variable. And because geom mosaic can be reduced to the lower level uh, geom geom rect, with the assistance of Carson, we were able to write a method for the two basic generic function uh, in Plotly. So we we're able to create uh, interactive mosaic plots with the ggplotly function. Um, it allows us to move past the less than satisfactory labeling that can occur uh, with mosaic plots since space is a limiting factor. And it aids the exploration and helps to provide uh, details uh, for faster insights. So for example, um, so I don't have access to it here, but if the tooltip, or if you hover over the different segments, uh, the tooltip gives us a combination of the variable values that the rectangle uh, represents. And it also tells us the frequency with which that combination is present in the data set. Uh, so now I'm going to go into some examples that just highlight the versatility of the GD Mosaic package. So in this first example, I've taken the NHANES uh, data and broken it up to display the different kinds of households that were surveyed. So we can see the marginal distribution of marital status represented uh, according, or represented by the widths of the bars. And then we can see the marginal distribution of the number of kids uh, by the color. And we can also see the joint distribution of the two variables by the size of each segment. Uh, for this next example, I took a plot from flowing data uh, that looked at how many drinks a person has on average when they drink. 
So in this example, there was a bar chart for every combination of gender and race. And you could uh, toggle through them and see a bar chart for each one. Um, so that works if what you're interested in is looking at the distribution of the number of drinks. But I thought that it might be interesting to um, put this data into a mosaic plot to see how the different levels of gender and race relate. So here I've made a mosaic plot um, that uh, first breaks it into race and then into the average number of drinks. And then um, each of those segments is then broken into gender. Um, so we can still see the information that was provided in the 10 bar charts before if we just look at um, the vertical up and down charts. Uh, but it gives us a better idea immediately of how the different uh, levels of gender and race um, relate. Uh, for another example, I um, have made a double decker plot. So this example is a modification of a mosaic plot where instead of alternating um, horizontal and vertical spines, a double decker plot is composed of um, n minus 1 h spines and then ends with the uh, v spine. So in this plot, I've first split by STEM major category and then by gender. So each of the, oops, each of the vertical um, bars represents a combination of um, gender and STEM major category. And then within each of those bars, we can see the uh, distribution of the deciles of median income um, for the recent grads. So this gives us, <coughs> um, admittedly, a slightly busy plot, uh, but it's a, a relatively clean way to present the three variables and to show how the proportions differ. So we can immediately see that there are more men than women in engineering. I can figure out how to use a clicker <laughs> um, with this, these two plots here. Uh, we can also see that there are significantly more women uh, than men in the health category. Uh, but then we can also see how the median income differs between each of the um, different STEM categories by comparing the, the groups here, the, the five groups. Um, pulling a quote from the Prodplots paper that was um, written about the product plot package by Hadley and Heike. Uh, the product plots framework defines a large space of potential plots. Uh, so in this next example, uh, each of these plots was made with ggmosaic, which pulls from product plots. And in each of these examples, the area is proportional to the joint probability. Uh, they're each showing the same joint distribution. And while most of these plots should never actually see the light of day, I wanted to take a moment to highlight the incredible versatility uh, that Gigi Mosaic via product plots is capable of. Uh, so there are a lot of ways that you can break down a uh, population into categories, and the order in which you do it matters. Um, so I've created a Shiny app with the happy data set, which is just a subset of the GSS data set or, or uh, survey. And with the Shiny app, you can access easily the many different ways to break uh, the population into segments. And um, you can also play with uh, changing the order of the, the variables. Um, so to wrap it up, uh, People do have a natural tendency to compare shapes by area, and so we could leverage this tendency to depict the statistical distributions via mosaic plots. Um, and with ggmosaic, uh, mosaic plots can now be implemented into uh, the ggplot2 framework, which provides a whole number of new uh, 
opportunities for mosaic plots. And while admittedly there are still issues with how GD Mosaic is implemented, um, we are hopeful that with the new version of ggplot2 uh, that was just released, we can uh, fix some of these bugs that ggmosaic currently, uh, currently has. But um, that is everything that I have for today. Any questions? Um, I, yes, but also it probably depends on what it is you're wanting to look at. Um, it just really depends on what you're looking to answer. Yes. Um, so that depends on how many values there are for each variable. Um, if there are a lot of values for a certain variable, uh, it gets really busy if there's more than three variables considered. Um, but if you're, only, if you're looking at um, variables that only have two options, you can continue to um, uh, cut up each block uh, a lot more. Thank you. Thank you.